God bless you all as you're coming in. Good to see each and every last one of you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all as you're coming on. God bless you all. It's good to see each and every last one of you. Blessings from Jamaica. Blessings to you all. God bless you all. It's so good to see each and every last one of you on this beautiful day. I'm excited about prophetic prayers with you all today. And it is a blessing to be on. We want to bless God for Apostle John Eckhart. And we thank God for his birthday. Uh, we're going to celebrate his birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow is his birthday. We thank God for Apostle. Amen. And what God is doing in his life. I thank God for uh, the opportunity to minister today. Amen. God bless you. We're live on Apostle uh, John Eckhart's page, on his Facebook page, and we're live on uh, my YouTube channel. And so we bless God for each and every last one of you that's coming in. We thank God for Houston. I see you all. I see um, uh, Wisconsin that's on. Amen. God bless you all. It's so good to see Alabama on, different ones that are coming on. Amen. We thank God for each and every last one of you all. Amen. Make sure you share. And, oh, Houston, Rosemary, Salem, you in Houston. Oh, God bless you. Amen. Listen, make sure you invite someone and share this video. I believe someone is going to be blessed. Amen. Someone just type in the comment section. I can smell victory. I can smell it. Have you ever woke up and you can just smell the victory? There's about to be supernatural victory that's going to hit our lives and that's going to roll over until December. Amen. Hallelujah. We smell victory. Amen. It's in the atmosphere. It's in the atmosphere. Victory is here. Victory is here. And just like someone is cooking in a kitchen, amen. Glory be unto God. You can smell the food. You can smell it. It's coming. We about to eat. And that's how God is doing right now in the atmosphere. Something great is getting ready to shift your life. Something great is getting ready to begin to happen in your life that is mind blowing. And I can smell it. I can smell victory. I can smell breakthrough. I can smell it. Amen. Glory be to God. And I'm literally, we're about to speak over your life in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. And so some of you all, I know as you're coming on, you can smell it. You can smell that God is something good is about to come out of this situation. Something good is about to come out of this situation. I can smell it. I can feel it. Something good is about to come out of this situation. I can smell it. I can sense it. I can feel it. I know, hallelujah, that I can feel what God is about to do. I can sense it. I can smell it. And so today we give you thanks. Every person that's coming on, tell God, thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you. We glorify you. We honor you. We bless you, God. We thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, God made the day. God made this day. And so our day is secured in you, oh God. And we bless you. We glorify you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for uh, our spouse. We thank you, Lord God, for our children. We thank you for the job you have given us, the ministries we are a part of. We thank you for the leaders you have placed in our lives. We thank you for the destiny helpers you have sent our way. We thank you for our the ability of our limbs. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and your mercy, which runs after us. We thank you, Lord God, for your protection, supernatural protection. We thank you, Lord God, for your supernatural peace. We thank you for your healing virtue that flows through us. We thank you that we have the mind of Christ. We are not focused on man. We're focused on Christ, eyes on Jesus. We know that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And we continue to seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness. And we know, and we know hallelujah all things will work together for the good of them that love the lord lord we praise you holy spirit take over holy spirit take over have your way in the mighty name of jesus we bless you we glorify you every person that is on lord speak 
Lord, speak to their life. Speak to their situation now. In the name of Jesus, we declare something is moving. Something is shaking. We're going to hear and we're going to see the glory of God today and experience it forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be unto God. I can smell the victory. I can smell victory. Hey, I love the scripture that says, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. He always causes us to have the victory. He always causes us to overcome. Listen, we have to understand who we serve. And when we know who we serve, we continue to serve him. Glory be unto God. As I was men, um, I, as I was meditating and we bless God last night, we had an amazing glory night service. Don't miss the next one in December. I'm telling you, don't want to miss the next glory night service in December. Make sure you get to Atlanta. Amen. We have live in-person services where you begin to activate. Last night, we did activations and impartations of spiritual gifts. Amen. We begin to pray to release the nine spiritual gifts in the atmosphere, the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of discerning of spirits. I'm telling you, the power of God began to break out. And there were many that I didn't even have to touch. God began to lay his hands upon them and begin to activate them with certain mantles, the mantle to pray, the mantle to heal the sick and they become healed. I'm telling you, there was so there was a powerful move of God last night. Amen that where God has taken us, we need the power of God. And, and the Bible says to covet the gifts of the spirit. He said, I want you to ask me for the gifts because I want you to be, and I will give it to you where I'm about to take you. You need the power of the Lord to help you. And you need to be able to discern different spirits on your job. You need to know whether the devil has creeped in or whether you need to pray through it. You need to hush your mouth. You need to learn how to be quiet. You need to learn how to walk in peace. I mean, when you have the discerning of spirits, the, the spirit of discernment, you'll be able to know, listen, at this particular time, I need to be quiet and hold my peace because the Lord is going to fight my battle. And so you begin to walk in the fruit of the spirit. And some people are like, how did you maneuver through that situation? The Lord told me the fruit of the spirit. How did you know to do those things? Because I have the gift of discernment. And many people are suffering. They're suffering in life. They're suffering financially. They're suffering and living paycheck to paycheck and don't know what to do because they won't allow the spirit of the Lord to tell them, listen, you are you asking for the impossible? Are you asking me for gifts? And many people just get up every morning and they just let the day have its way in their life. But God says, no, you get up and you command your morning and you begin to operate in the gifts that I have put upon you. And so last night we have activations and impartations. Go back and watch the replay video. It's on my page. Page. We is on YouTube on my YouTube page is on my page. We will tag my name at the end of the video above this link and you can go and watch the replay. Listen, there's no distance in the spirit. Amen. God can touch you virtually. Amen. If you wasn't in person. Amen. We bless God for those who are there and we can't wait until December. We'll put the link up at the end to register. It is free, open to the public, but we ask that you register. We want to close out December strong going into the new year. Year. Amen. The December. Um, I don't have the date in front of me, but I'll put the link um on there uh for the next one. Amen. It's going to be a powerful move of God to close out the year, the last glory night in December 2023, headed into 2024. Amen. Don't you miss it. Amen. Don't you miss it. Amen. Don't you miss it. Amen. Get these instructions. November, the Lord has empowered us. You need to be empowered to do God's will. Amen. People, it, 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 the time is over preaching and you don't have revelation. Amen. The Bible says there's a gift of the revelation and knowledge of God's word. He can give you the gift of wisdom, the gift of faith. Amen. Uh, you, there's a, it, a time is over where we just getting married and we don't have any discernment. Come on, time is over where we just trying to make money the natural way and, and hustling and bustling and, and working so hard. That time Time is over. Let God empower you so you can do it effectively. And when people look at you, they'll say, "It's your life is different." Of course, in the kingdom is different. Somebody put that in the comment section. In the kingdom of God, it's different. Put that in the comment section. In the kingdom of God, it's different. 
It's not like the world system. It's different over here, baby. It's different over here. In the kingdom of God, you don't have to work so hard. Come on. We understand. We pull down favor. We understand favor is better than money. Amen. Glory be unto God. If God can favor you, come on, somebody. People who have money will envy you. Amen. You have to understand the currency of the kingdom. Amen. Come on. When the news declare that it's a recession, you got to say it's different over here in the kingdom. Baby, in the kingdom, it's different. There ain't no recession. Come on. In God's heaven, they're full supply. And I call it forth from the north, the south, the east, and the west. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I call forth my breakthrough. I call forth my resources. I call forth healing. If the enemy trying to attack your body with stomach flu and the viruses and, and this disease of the week, you better get up in the middle of the night or whenever that thing try to hit your body. And you got to say it's different in the kingdom by his strength. Stripes, I am healed. I am healed. And I command healing to flow in the name of Jesus. Healing must flow. Healing must flow. Sickness go. Healing flow in the name of Jesus. I rebuke this sickness. I rebuke this virus. The Bible says, speak to the mountain and the mountain must be removed in the name of Jesus. I am healed by his stripes. I am healed. I rebuke it. Get out of me. You would not frustrate me all night. You would not frustrate my death. Day. You would not interrupt what God is doing in my life. And then you'll look up. Holy Spirit will come in and intervene. I prophesy over every person that is on here now that you will see an invasion. That Holy Spirit will come in and intervene on your behalf. He will intervene against that sickness. He will intervene now in the name of Jesus against that storm that has hit your life. I declare there will be supernatural testimonies that you will begin to see the power of God intervene on your on your behalf let there be a, a divine intervention in the name of Jesus let God invade our lives in the name of Jesus let thy kingdom come let thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven I smell victory I smell victory I smell victory and so the Lord has, he spoke to me as I was praying about today. And I began to ask him what to say. And he said, let my people know victory. Victory is all over them. You got to see victory before you even have victory. The woman of God has spoken. Victory is over your life. So even if you don't see it, don't be moved by what you see. Victory is, listen, I, someone just spoke it. Victory, amen. I receive it for myself. I receive it. I pull that down in the name of Jesus. Now the Lord began to speak to me that if you can smell victory, you can also smell other things. This is spiritually talking. Spiritually, we're talking. And it's very important that you understand what you carry. Know what you carry. Don't go another day, another month without knowing what what follows you. What you what do you carry and what follows you? What follows you? What follows your family? What follows your children? What follows you? What do you carry? Because there are some people they carry victory while others are carrying darkness. There's some people they are uh, goodness. God's goodness and his mercy follows them. And there are others. Evil follow them. Sickness follows them. Bad news follows them. I was pumping my gas the other day. And when I was pumping my gas, this man come running out here and, 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 and he just wanted to spill his bad news in the atmosphere because he was tired and sick and, sick and tired of being tired. And so he wanted everybody else to feel the same way. And he began to open his mouth and he said, he said, nothing good ever happens to me. And I released that thing out of the atmosphere. I said, I don't receive it. Some of you all, when the devil starts speaking, you need to say, I don't receive it. I don't receive it. I don't receive bad news today. I don't receive it. I don't receive it. I don't receive sickness. I don't receive a frustration. I don't receive lack. I don't receive this bad news. I don't receive all this attacks and, 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 and drama and all. I don't receive it in the name of Jesus. I don't receive it for my 
my family. I don't receive it for my church. I don't receive it for my business. I don't care what the devil, I don't care if the devil don't like it. I don't receive it. I'm going to receive God's goodness and his mercy, not bad things. The Bible says God's goodness and his mercy follows me, not bad things, not evil things. Bad things don't follow me. Bad things don't follow me. Come on, you your mouth is prophetic. Bad things don't follow me. His goodness follows me. His mercy follows me. His love follows me. Come on, his, his care follows me. Hallelujah, his protection follows me. I'm protected by God. I'm protected by angels. I'm protected, hallelujah, by Holy Spirit. Ah, good things follow me. Only good things follow me, not bad things, not evil things. And there's some people... If you don't take care of your spiritual life, you will start smelling. You'll start smelling. And there's a scent that comes off on certain people. There's a scent of peace. There's a scent of the presence of God. There's a scent and a fragrance that they carry. And you're like, it ain't no perfume, baby. And it ain't no, you know, Chanel. It ain't none of that. I'm t- it's a scent that is a heavenly scent. Amen. There's a scent you carry that you can see debt free is all over you, baby. Come on, somebody. There's a scent that's all over you. Hallelujah. That the Lord, hallelujah, there's peace all over you. But there's some other people. There's a scent they carry. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you something. You can tell when people are properly taking care of themselves. Are they taking out the trash? See, when you take out the trash, that means you're renewing your mind. I got to get this trash out of my mind. You you would know every now and then that you got to go a a, a little break on social media every now and then. I'm not trying to distance myself. I'm just trying to keep, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to make it. I'm trying to stay strong in the Lord. I'm trying to stay strong in the Lord. And in order to stay strong in the Lord, sometimes I got to make sure I take out some garbage. I got to take out bad news. I got to take out the mess. And, and, and when you take out that, you begin to carry. You know, those who have taken out their trash, you don't smell it. But there are many people, they don't take out their trash. Depression has hit them so they can't even take out the trash. And so as soon as you pull up, you can stint. It's a stench. Something ain't right. I can smell depression on you. I can smell jealousy on you. Some people, they don't even have to open their mouths. You can smell insecurities on them. You're like, hold on, something ain't right. Everything upsets you. They need to take out their trash. That you need to get delivered. You need to be healed. You need to be set free. Come on, come on, we can smell that you're mad because God is not using you and you feel the devil has convinced you that he's using everybody else but you. And God is saying, you need to get healed because there's no secret what I can do. If I have done it for others, I'll do the same thing for you. But what you need to do is take your eyes off of what God is doing in somebody else and you begin to labor before the Lord in his rest and say, Lord, I rest in you. I know you have put me here on the the earth for a purpose. I'm not going to be insecure of this one or that one. And you, when you begin to put your life in the Lord's hand, you will see the Lord has a beauty in every, and he says, in my time and I'll make everything beautiful for you again. He's about to make it beautiful for you. He's about to make it beautiful for you. But the devil got you worried. Comparing your business to that person's business. You don't know the hell they going through. You don't know how they almost quit. You don't know how they did all the stuff that has happened to them. And you're fighting them. And you're mad at them. And you got an attitude with them. Not knowing that they, it takes so much for them to even get up to even do God's will. You better stick with what God told you to do. And stop stinking. We can smell it on you that you are defeat. You're defeated. You have a stench of defeat. You have a stench of failure. That everything you touch, it fails. Everything that you touch, it fails. The poor man, as soon as he marries to you, everything around you, everything fails. The devil is a liar. You better know what you carry. And you better know what follows you. And once you identify, baby, uh, debts, because you're going to know if it's debts following you, it's going to come in the mail. Debt collectors, debt collectors, 
You're going to you're going to be running about your business. Your phone constantly ringing. That's 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 you, you owe this. You didn't make a payment. You didn't make a payment. Then, and then you're going to have people just calling you. Listen, I gave you some money. You said you was going to pay me back, but you don't have no money to pay them back. God is identifying and showing you what you carry. That means somewhere darkness is over your life. Somewhere you need to understand that this thing is following me and it, 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 it is not supposed to be following me. Sickness is not supposed to be following me. Death's not supposed to be following me. Marriage delays are not supposed to be following me. You mean to tell me that you don't want to get married? Why is it that you don't want to get married? Something is following you. Hold on one second. Okay, y'all have to put them dogs up there. I'm live and I is interrupting the live. Why are you allowing the enemy to convince you that I can't have a baby? I guess I'm supposed to be barren. The devil is a liar. You identify what spirit is following you and you rebuke it. In the name of Jesus, we stand in the authority of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare Satan, take your hands off of me. Come on. There are some days if you understand that some things are uh, deaths following you, delay following, you better say in the name of Jesus, I stand in the power of the Holy Ghost. I am not supposed to be delayed. I'm not supposed to be denied all the time, all the time being denied, all the time chaotic situations coming towards me. Every time you get around family and friends and your spouse, everybody is angry angry towards you, that you arrest that spirit of anger. Uh, 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 uh. Everybody angry with me? The devil is a liar. No, I operate in peace. So by the power in the holy, by the power in the blood of Jesus, I command Satan to take his hands off of me. Take his hands off of my body. Take his hands off of my finances. Somebody better open their mouth and pray. I command Satan to take his hands off of my children. You will no longer manipulate my spouse in anger. You will no longer mani manipulate my children in anger. Satan, take your hands off of my finances. Take your hands off of our businesses. Take your hands off of our ministry. Take your hands off of my home in the name of Jesus. And I begin to speak peace. I begin to speak the love of God. I begin to speak order, 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 order. And I speak victory to every situation. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I don't belong to devils. I don't belong to evil spirits. You will no longer control me. Today, the Lord says he's breaking the control off of you. There are some of you, you're in ministry, but you're being controlled. Some of you are in business and you're being controlled. The Lord says, break the spirit of slavery off of you. You enslave to this and you enslave to that. You enslave to people. Do you know it's a dangerous thing to walk around and then feel intimidated when people People come around. I got to suck up to this one. And if I don't suck up to this one, they're not going to open the door for me in ministry. You are in slavery. When someone comes around, you get fearful. You better break that spirit of fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear. But of love sound in, uh, in a sound mind. We break the double mindedness in the name of Jesus. That the enemy got you all over the place. Certain people you are in fear to. You have given your power away, thinking that this person can open doors for you. When Jesus said in the Bible, I am the door. You better be careful putting your power and your life in people's hands and thinking that they are the one that's going to open a door for, for you. Come on, somebody, because if you put your life in somebody's hands, one minute they'll open a the door for you and then they'll shut the door for you. But when God opens a door, but when God opens doors, but when God opens doors, no man can shut it. Y'all better hold. You better make sure that God is the Lord over that life You because no man can stop you. You better make sure God is the captain over your finances because when he opens the door, nobody can stop the finance. You better make sure God is the one over your influence. 
Because I'm telling you, if God didn't bring that influence away, if they are not sent to you by God, soon as they dislike you, they're leaving, they're leaving, they're leaving, they're leaving. They're not from God. You'll be up and down. Your ministry, up and down. You got fickle people, up and down. One minute they like you, one minute they don't. They are not sent from God. The Lord says, you got to get to a place where goodness follows you. Mercy follows you. The Bible says it. There are things that follows you. Get to a place where victory follows you. Get to a place where you start carrying it. Not only it follows you, you carry it. When you walk in a room, the atmosphere of healing takes place. People start getting healed. Not because of you. You carry the power of God. You carry the peace of God. When you go places, people begin to, them demons start coming down. They say, listen, we got to leave. We got to leave because she finna start praying. We got to leave because he finna start worshiping. We got to leave. Come on, somebody. And we begin to silence whatever the enemy is trying to do in the name of Jesus. Listen, the Lord is going to give you supernatural victory. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. The first thing the Lord says today, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. Cast your cares upon me. Listen, God never told you to be a God and try to fight people's battles and fight your battle. Baby, I don't want to fight it. I give it to God. Daily, I give him my burdens. Daily, I give him the cares. I give him what they do to me. I get him what they did. Listen, the Bible says God sees. God sees what's happening to you. God sees what people are doing. God sees conversations. God, I don't know who I'm talking to, but God hears and sees conversations and you want to connect with them, but God is holding the connection back. Why? Because God says, you don't know what I heard. You don't know what I heard. You got a kind heart. You love on people. You are very genuine and kind and people take advantage of you. But God said, I ain't going to let them get close to you because they don't mean no good. They don't mean no good. Them the kind of folks that smile on your face, but behind your back, they come on, they're trying to take your place. I'm here to tell you, God said, listen, you don't know. I heard some conversations that wasn't right. And it's God says, because I love you, I ain't going to let that thing pull off. I ain't going to let that thing come off. I'm here to tell you, God sees and he knows what people are doing behind the scenes on your behalf. But somebody say, thank God that he covers me. Thank God that he covers me. That's, somebody say, thank God for the stuff. I, he covers me about stuff I don't even know. God will cover you about things you didn't know. I want to praise God for the stuff I didn't even know. I want to praise God for the, the situation that I didn't even know that was going on. I didn't know that you was jealous of me. I didn't know that you hated me. Come on. I didn't know that you was envious of me. I didn't know that you was sick of me. I didn't know none of that stuff. But God covered me. God covered me. God covered me. The Bible says when he saw that Leah was hated, God says, I can see when people hate you. Come on. Somebody stop acting like God don't see. God see. He hears conversations. He even sees the hidden part of you, the heart. Do you know your heart can speak and your mouth is shut? Mm. Mm. My mouth is shut, but my heart is saying, I can't stand you. My mouth is shut, but my heart is my heart is speaking. There are so many people, their hearts are speaking. And God is saying, listen, that's why I had to tell you in the Bible that man promotes the outward appearance. But baby, I do. I promote a part that people don't like. I promote your heart. There are people will come up to me all the time. When God is going to promote me, when God is going to promote me, I said, baby, you better read the scripture because the Bible says men will promote your outward appearance. But God... When, when God is not opening the door, you better, is a heart, is a heart condition, is a heart condition, is a heart condition, is a heart condition. Let me tell you something. Men promotes how you look, but God, when you're dealing with God, baby, that's a whole nother level. God promotes the hidden part of you. God promotes the part that nobody knows about. Just God, only God and you know that area and that's your heart because your mouth can be saying one thing, but your heart can be saying, I can't stand people. I don't like this and I don't like that. And your heart can be wicked, but you look righteous. Your heart can fool you. Your heart can be wicked and you look righteous. Your heart can be full of jealousy and envy, but out of your mouth, I'm a minister, I'm a prophet, but your heart is saying something totally different. And that's why God says, I promote the heart. 
I promote the heart. Lord, creating us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit. The Bible says, if you call upon me in a time of trouble, I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. Yes, call on him in the times of trouble. The Lord says, I'll answer you in trouble. And he says, I'll show you great and mighty things. God says, it's time in the month of November. It's time for me to show you great and mighty things that you don't even know about. I'm getting ready to take you places you haven't been, places you have never gone before. Come on, I want you all to praise God. God just opened up a door for us to, our feet are is about to hit Europe. I've preached all over the place, but this will be my first time preaching out of, uh, overseas. This will be my first time preaching overseas. And so I'm here to tell you next month, December, we're headed to Europe to preach in the Netherlands. Hallelujah. Amsterdam, Netherlands. And I'm telling you, that can only be God. What am I saying right here? He says, when you call upon me, I will show you great and mighty things that you've never seen before. Come on. God is saying, I'm about to do. Come on. If you do my will, I'll show you great and mighty things that you've never seen before. I'll take you places you've never gone before. I'll do things in you that you've never seen. I prophesy great and mighty things are coming upon you now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I to speak over every person that's watching. Let thy kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, we want your will, not our will. We lay our agenda down. We lay our, our, our focus down. Yes, we know that there's gossip out there about us. Yes, we know there are envious people out there. Yes, you listen, there's nothing, that that's not your concern. It's not your concern about fixing people, but I lay my will down. And I say, Lord, I give you my life. Let thy kingdom come. Let thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Watch your life begins to walk in the will of God. God says, I'm going to, he says, I'm going to make sure my will happens in your life. I speak over every person that's watching that all things begin to work together for your good. I don't know what has come against you, but I prophesy that all things will begin to start working Oh, I smell victory. Oh, I sense victory. It's going to work out for my good. It's going to work out for my good. It's going to work out for my good. In the name of Jesus. Yes, the address in Amsterdam is on my page. It's on my page. We'll tag the link to the end. It's, um, we, we posted the flyer on my page. Amen. Glory be unto God. Somebody say it's working together for my good. It's all things not some things. I don't know what you're in right now. And some of you all, the Lord says, I'm going to give you an end of the year blessing. I'm going to give you an end of the year miracle because I got to make it work out all together for your good. Hallelujah. I'm not going to leave you there hanging. I'm not going to leave you there suffering. I'm going to work it out together for your good in the name of Jesus. And he says, he says, he says, he says, all those who, who love the Lord and who have been called according to my purpose. Because you love me, I'm working it together for your good. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Whether the devil likes it or not, God is working it out for my good. Today, in the name of Jesus, whatever attack you're under now, in the name of Jesus, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. All plans of the evil one, that is targeting you, that is targeting me, my family, that's targeting any area of your life. We counsel all demonic plans of the enemy now in the name of Jesus. We break off witchcraft. We break off evil spells. We rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, all, all wicked targets that the enemy has been sending evil arrows your way. We counsel it. We break it now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Today, we declare that the Lord is releasing peace, peace in the midst of the storm, peace over your situation, peace, 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 peace. I speak peace over your life. I speak peace over that family. I speak peace over the business. God said, I'm going to supply. I'm going to supply all of your needs. I'm going to supply all the needs. Every need be met for the month of November. Every need be met for the month of December. And I declare overflow for 2024. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. We will lack nothing. We will lack nothing. We will lack nothing. We will not lack nothing. 
In the name of Jesus, the Lord says, I'm going to show myself strong in your life. I'm going to show myself strong in your life. I'm going to show myself strong in your family. You're going to know that I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can. Ask, you can ask or think. You will never be stranded. You will never be stranded. You will never be forsaken. We've never seen the righteous forsaken. We've never seen the seed beg for bread. I will not be a beggar. I will not beg my way out. I will not beg in the name of Jesus. I will not be stranded. My children will not be stranded. I will not lack no good thing in the name of Jesus. I will not be forsaken. For the Lord shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I stand on Psalms 23. For the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Jehovah Jireh, he is our provider. I release the help of God. I release the help of God over my life, over your life in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us. Holy Ghost, help us. We will never be forsaken. Lord, for your namesake, show up for us for your namesake. Give us a miracle for your namesake. Silence the mockers. Silence those who have evil attacks against us. Silence those who seek my downfall. Silence the enemy now in the name of Jesus. Deliver me from the hand of the enemy. Deliver me from the hand of the enemy. I release the help of God over my life. Begin to release the help of God over your children. Release the help of God over your finances. Release the help of God over your marriage and declare in the name of Jesus, I'm receiving help in all areas of my life. I shall not lack. My days of lack are over. Listen, you got to break that. I must get it this year. I must get it this year. My days of lack are over. As I roll into a new year, as I roll into a new month, I declare, hallelujah, my days of lack is coming to an end. I I step into the overflow. I step into the provision of God in the name of Jesus. God says, I'm fighting for you. You will no longer need to fight this battle. Exodus 14 and 14. Where the Bible says you will no longer need to fight this battle for the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's for the Lord is fighting for me for the Lord. He says, all you got to do is hold your peace. I will fight for you. I will fight those who fight you. Those who fight against you are fighting against God. Those who really love the Lord, those who fight against you, they're really fighting against God. And so that's why I repent and I get out of the way of people. And I don't want to step on what God is doing in somebody's life. And so I don't speak against and do all this and all that stuff because sometimes when you're fighting against people, you're fighting against God. You're fighting against the will of God on their life. And I don't want to be a part of what Satan is doing in nobody's life. Let me say that again. I don't want to be a part of anything that Satan is doing in somebody's life. And so when you start fighting against people, you get on the team with Satan because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. All he is known at is coming against God's people. And I can't come against you. I let God do the fighting. I, I let God do the vindicating. I let God do the fighting for me. Huh? Come on, somebody. You got to understand that God is fighting for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord is fighting all your battles. The Lord is fighting all my battles. Come on, prophesy that over yourself. The Lord is fighting all my battles. Huh? Ah, because He as, as I release the help of the Lord, he's fighting. He's fighting for me. The, the presence of God is going to overshadow you. In every situation, the presence of God is going to bring you peace. You will not be anxious about nothing. You're not going to be anxious about ministry, about business. I will not be anxious because the Lord is going to help you. The Lord is going to help us. I give that worry to the Lord. You know, tomorrow you enter into his rest. When people ask you, are you worried about, mm -mm, I have given it to the Lord. The Lord has fought my back. He's fighting. I don't even know what he's doing behind the scenes because I, I would not be, I refuse to be anxious about anything because the Lord is helping me. The Lord says, as you seek me, continue to seek me. He said, I will answer you and deliver you from all your fears. I'm going to answer you and I'm going to deliver you from all your fears. Your fears of the future, I'm delivering you. Your fears of your children, I'm delivering you from that. The fear of your finances, I'm delivering you from that. The fear of your life, I'm delivering you from that. The fear of people pleasing, I'm going to deliver you from that. Yes, we love people, but don't become a slave to people. 
Don't become a slave to people. When, when they stop speaking to you, you got to go and start rushing them down and all that. You're going to say, listen, mm -mm, I've done my part. I have walked in peace, but it's not my job to make people like me. Let God fight for you. Let God put it on somebody's heart. Let God announce you. Let God favor you. Let God open that door. But don't you bust that door down. Don't become a slave to people. Become a slave to God. And that means you go where he tells you to go. You do what he tells you to do. Whether they speak to you or not, you're like, mm, I'm on assignment. But you got to know where you're on an assignment for because God ain't got you. Everybody's not your assignment. Put that on there. Everybody's not my assignment. Everybody is not my assignment. Well, I'm trying to convince someone that I'm called to business. The reason they're not convinced, because they're not called to you. And they will never like you. There's some people, they will never like you. There's some people going to go to their graves hating you. Why? Because you're not their assignment. But there are some people that are called to you. You're not everybody's cup of tea. You're not everybody's cup of tea. They might not see it. So somebody on here may say, I like peppermint tea. I don't like the way peppermint tastes. So you may say, well, oh, she don't like that's not my That's not my flavor. But if you start talking about other flavors, I'm like, okay, I can get with you. You have to be okay with people who say, I like peppermint, people who don't like peppermint, fine. But all I know is I like peppermint. And you got to be okay with that. Stop trying to convince people that you're called to the prophetic. The reason they're not convinced, because you're not called to them. There's some people, they would never listen to you. They would never open their ears to hear you. But the Lord will release an anointing upon you that people will hear you. That's a grace that can come upon you that people will want to hear you. For people to give their ears to you and want you to pray for them and want you to minister to them and all this stuff, that is a grace where God is saying, now I have opened you up where the nations will hear you. God is delivering you from all your fears. But don't get upset if nobody, if, 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 if certain people are not convinced. My days of convincing are over. You need to say that. My days of convincing people are over. I, listen, the Bible says, he says, he says, you better stop, stop giving your pearls away. That's how your ministry becomes um, um, stale. People won't take you serious because you're talking to people that don't want to hear you. You only talk when God tells you to speak. And those are the ones that will receive what God is saying in you. I'm not trying to convince you to, to hear. No, 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 no. If you don't want it, go, go on. I have people come up to me. Woman of God, God told me you, 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 you supposed to mentor me. I'm like, okay, fine. Fine. And then when I go into a session with them, and see, I got my degree and see, I got this and see, I'm a, I'm a pastor and see, I got, I got 20 members and I got, duh, 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 and the, you know, I'm doing, duh, 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 and, and I'm like, okay, you really don't need a mentor. Why are you, why are you coming to me? Why are you with me? Cause you got it all together. You got it all together. The only way you can receive, you will never receive from a person's anointing if you don't honor it. My daughter looked at me, she said, mama, why are these doors open up for you in, in Africa and in Europe and, and over here on this side of town, over here in the F Philadelphia, all this little, he said, she said, mama, why you, I said, behind the scenes, I'm honoring people that live in Africa. I'm honoring people that live in Europe. I'm honoring people that their ministries that I honor, their ministries that I sow into. See, people don't, people don't say that there are ministries that I sow in that's international. Before they ever called on me, I sow into different ministries that's in that region. And people say, well, why are doors open for you? You will never receive from a, a, a you will never, you will never receive from mantles you don't honor. I have people that look at me and they'll turn the other way. And the Lord is like, listen, if you knew the mantle that was on her, you would begin to say, listen, let me humble myself. And that's what God showed me. Jackie, people who are going higher than you, honor them. Because you need the grace to do it the same way. So I sow into their ministries. I sow into them. I sow in Apostle Eckhart's ministry. I sow faithfully into his ministry. 
This man is international. This man is a general. One day the Lord, I want him to make me, hallelujah, to do some great things that God is doing in my life, my husband, my children. So I humble myself and I sow. I honor the man of God. Not because I'm sucking up. You have to understand you will never receive from certain mantles, graces on people's lives if you don't honor them. You can act as you can act arrogant all day long and you'll stay stuck. And people look and say, well, how did that door open for you in Europe? I've been sewing in people that in Netherlands for, for, for years. And so when I you have to understand that honor opens the door. Dishonor closes it. But you don't become a slave to people. Do you get what I'm saying? When I see Apostle, I honor him, but I move on. I honor him. If, if he's in town, I was like, Apostle, if I can make it, I'm there. Anybody that I literally, I am benefiting from the grace that's on their lives, I sow and I submit under their ministry. Because God, they are praying for, praying for me. They are ministering to me. They are pouring into me. But you will never see me become a slave to man. Well, I seek them more than I seek God. I hope somebody understand what I'm saying. The Lord is delivering many today from all of your fears. That's a scripture. The Lord is delivering you from all of your fears. He says, he says, he says, I'm going to do a new thing in your life. Somebody say, God, do a new thing. He's doing a new thing in your life, in your marriage, your business. Get ready to see it. A new thing is about to happen. God is going to show up for you and answer you. God is going to show up for you. He says, I'm going to show up for you in an unusual way. I'm not showing up how I showed up in that person's life. How I'm showing up for you is going to be in an unusual way. Lord, do unusual miracles in my life. Do unusual breakthroughs in my life, God. He says, I'm fulfilling. Uh, he says, I'm filling you up with joy and peace as you trust me. Because I'm about to step into your situation. I'm about to step into that situation. I'm about to step. God says, I'm about to step into your situation. And while you wait, I'm filling you with joy and peace as you trust me. The Lord says, I'm wiping away the tears from your eyes. I don't know how many of you, you've cried over some situations. The Lord said, I'm wiping that away. Listen, I can raise my, I done cried over some situations. I've cried over situations. I trust me, I know how it is to cry, cry over situations. But the Lord is wiping tears away. The Lord is wiping tears away today. He says, I'm wiping the tears from your eyes. And he is rebuking premature death. He's rebuking premature death. And the Lord says, you will not be short of ideas. You will not be short of ideas. I'm giving you divine ideas. And these ideas are going to turn your finances around for good, for good. God says, I'm releasing to you supernatural ideas that's going to turn your finances around for good. I release the grace of God upon your life. And he says, this grace is going to cover for the losses in your life. Some of you have lost this year. You lost big. You lost major in business. You lost in ministry. You lost financially. The Lord says recovery is happening. Recovery. I speak recovery in the name of Jesus. I speak recovery for every person who lost. You lost out. You lost out. So now you got debts piled up. Lord says, I'm going to pay off those debts. I'm going to cancel, cancel those debts in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, the restorer is here and the Lord is restoring you because I'm telling you, he's giving you victory. It's supernatural victory that's going to hit your life, your family. I'm telling you, recovery is happening. God says restoration to your finances. I send, I speak restoration to your marriage. I speak restoration to your health. Come on, the enemy, the way he messed up your health and all kind of stuff, the Lord said, I got to even go and correct what he has done to your body. I pray that your taste come back, your smell come back. Amen. That the Lord begins to heal your organs and all your body parts in the name of Jesus. 
that the enemy has tampered with. In the name of Jesus, I speak creative healings. In the name of Jesus, oh, Rabban Soko Handebekanda, and the thief was caught stealing. He has to pay you back seven times that amount. I declare, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, the grace to recover all in the name of Jesus come upon you now. And the Lord says, as I give you restoration that comes upon your life, this restoration is going to bring about supernatural speed. The Lord says, I'm going to speed you back up. See, some of you gave up in ministry, but if you can hold on to the horns of the altar, the Lord says, I'll speed you up in ministry. See, some of you don't know how to fight the good fight of faith. You got to fight in ministry. Don't give up. And when you don't give up, the Lord will give you restoration in ministry and he'll speed you back up. Y'all don't want to hear this in here today. See, some of you fell off, but I've seen people fell off. Their, their, their influences dropped on social media. Their influences has dropped. The members fell off. Business and clients, people fell off. Money dropped. All kind of stuff had dropped. But I'm here to tell you, if you can hold on to the horns of the altar, the Lord says, I'll give you restoration in business and I'll speed you back up. I'll give you restoration. Hallelujah. Over your finances. I'll speed you back up. And you'll say, what debt? What debt? The Lord has paid it off. Come on. Listen, when when they came up to Jesus and say, you got to pay Caesar what is due to Caesar. Jesus said, that's fine. He says, fish produce money. Come on, somebody. He paid his debts off within one, one, one minute in the name of Jesus. He reaches in the fish's mouth and he pays his debts off. I declare we will be imitators of Jesus. Just like Jesus, I'm going to be just like my daddy. If my dad, come on, I'm an heir to the things of the kingdom of God. I'm a partaker of a life that's not normal in the name of Jesus. I'm a partaker of God, of the graces of God in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be just like my daddy. If Jesus walked this earth and he paid off his debts, I'm being debt. I'm, I'm paying off debt. I'm paying off debts. Somebody receive it. Somebody receive it. Debts are being paid off. Debts are being paid off. And I'm going to do God's will. And I'm going to do it debt free in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be just like my daddy. I'm going to produce the way God produces. And the Lord says, if you can hold on, I'm going to bring you speed. Recover. I'm going to speed you up in ministry. I'm going to speed you back up. And I don't care if you fell off. What? Come on. Nothing is impossible to Jesus. Nothing is impossible to Jesus. I smell victory. I smell victory. I'm prophesying to somebody. And you waiting for me to call your name. I smell victory, Tony Foster. Darlene Dittness. Beverly Posley. Sawanda Adams. Brittany Cofield. Listen, we smell victory and Aaron Gray. Something, something is happening. Something is shaking. We're going to see the glory of God hit our lives. There's going to be a supernatural invasion. God is going to enter. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You're going to see God give you supernatural victory. He said, I'm speeding you back up. When rest, when God restores, he speeds you back up. Pastor Gwendolyn, he speeds you back up. Because if you can see, people don't know how to hold on to the horns of the altar. They go through, they give up. They go through, they give up on ministry. They give up in business. They give up financially. They give up on the dreams God has given them. But let me tell you something. There are times I feel like giving up, but the Lord said, listen, if you will hold on, he said, he says, don't give up because you, it will be said in your generation. You couldn't handle your giant. It will be said in your generation. Mama couldn't handle her giant. Come on, David couldn't handle his giant. Imagine if David never, David giant made him famous. Some of you all, if you hold on, we don't know what's going to come out of you after you conquer this giant. Come on, so God puts you in this generation for a reason to look at that giant and say, come hell or high water, I ain't scared of no devil. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you and you move off of my properties. Get out of my way. I take territory back. In the name of Jesus, I walk in the authority that 
that Jesus has given me and I remove you. I, some of you are breaking about 20 demons that's attached to your name, but you done took out 10. You got 10 more. Can I encourage somebody? You got 10 more. So don't give up. Come on, don't give up. You had 20 that was in your bloodline. Can you hear me today? There were 20 demons that was attached to you, your name, your bloodline. They were all different names. And you took out 10. By the power of God in prayer, you rebuked it. You, you fasted. You, you got rid of those spirits. But you got 10 more. But you're going to get the victory. By force, you getting out of here. By the fire, fire and blood of Jesus, I silence you. I'm telling you, there were nights where I was conquering certain spirits that was attacking me, my bloodline. And I, I, I could feel them from my generational curses. They were screaming at me in my dreams. I would go to sleep. They were screaming at me. I'm mad at you. I'm mad at you because you're breaking evil altars. I'm mad at you. I'm telling you, there were nights I was I was even afraid. I said, I told my husband, I said, there are nights I feel like I'm being tormented in my dreams. But my husband said, conquer those devils. You got to get up and speak to those mountains. You speak to that mountain of sickness. Listen, I tormented her mother. I tormented her father. I tormented her grandmother. I tormented this one. I tormented her daddy. I tormented this one. And I want to torment you. And they were screaming at me. I'm ready for you. But I got up that morning and said, the blood of Jesus. I sent fire. I, I arrest these spirits in the name of Jesus. Come on. Once you take out those, let me tell you something. Your children won't even know what struggle is. The next generation won't even know about all the stuff you went through. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. Your problems, your children, the next generation will have is what to do with the blessing. Y'all don't want to hear me in here. Y'all better, you can change generations. You can affect generations. Your prayers can affect generations. Come on, somebody. Let your children have a good problem to have. Well, what are we going to do with all these properties? Come on, we grew up in a generation, we, we didn't know no properties. We didn't know land. We renting here, written this, written that, written that, written that. Having to beg to hire me. Can you hire me? Can you hire me? This next generation, the Lord says, start business. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Let your children's problem be, well, which business should we, should we work for that our parents have started? Or you put a mindset in them. Come on. Come on. Come on. The Lord says, I release restoration. Today, we're about to leave. I break the spirit of stagnation off of you. You will no longer labor so hard and get little results. Some of you are working so hard and you're getting little results. Some of you are working morning, noon, and night and still like a disciple. We ain't caught no fish, Jesus. You are no longer, your days of stagnation is over. We break the spirit of delay. We break the spirit of delay in the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness. You working like an elephant and you eating like an ant. If you see how an ant eat, baby, that means y'all starving. You work like an elephant. And you eat like an ant. Those days are over. Some see some of you gotta speak to your storm. You 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 thought that was normal to work like an elephant and eat like an ant. The devil is a liar. We would no longer labor so hard and then get little results. Many of you will be grounded in the word of God. You will be anchored in the word of God. You will not be all over the place in the name of Jesus. May you be anchored in the word of God. By the power in the blood of Jesus, I counsel all evil plans of the enemy. The enemy will no longer frustrate you in ministry. He will no longer frustrate you in business. He will no longer frustrate you finance, financially. He will no longer frustrate you this day, this month. The frustration from enemies and devils are over in the name of Jesus. God is for you. The Lord says the last thing, if you can believe me for the impossible, you will see the impossible. Someone just say it, Lord, I thank you that today we are going to see the victory. We can smell it. We can feel it. Now I believe you for the impossible and I will see it. He said, don't believe the lies of the devil. Believe me for the impossible and you're going to see it. 
The Lord says, what is that impossible situation that you that you need me to handle? Believe me for the impossible. Come on, I don't know who I'm talking for. I don't know who I'm talking to. But God says, go back to believing me for the impossible and you're going to see the impossible. Believe me for the impossible and you're going to see the impossible. If you can, you, you're not going to see it if you don't believe it. Go back to believing God for the impossible things and you're going to receive it. I want everybody to say, God, I thank you for the answer. See, some of you, we pray, 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 but God, now you got to praise him in advance. Now I thank you for the answer. All those prayer decrees. Yes. I thank you for the answer. I thank you for answer prayers. I thank you that my prayers are already answered today. My prayers are already answered today. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the prayers that's answered. Praise him in advance. You said in your word that if we ask anything according to your name, you will give it to us in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the answer. It's already done. We receive it now in the name of Jesus by the holy fire of God. We have the answer. You said when we call upon you, you have already answered. Lord, you have already answered us in business and ministry. We thank you for the impossible. Today, the Lord says, go out expecting the impossible and watch you see the victory. Watch you see the victory and rest in God. Tomorrow we rest. Today, we go in expectation, expectation that if I can believe, I can receive. The Bible says, if you believe it, you will receive it. If you can believe it, you can receive it in Jesus name. Someone say, I believe God. I'm going back to believing God. I believe it and I receive it. I believe it, and I receive it. I believe it. Whatever you believe in God for, God says, I have already done it. I have already done it. I'm turning it around for you. I have already given you. Listen, change your prayers. It's already done. He's already given you it. Someone said, listen, when are you going to get the house? I already got the house. I'm a homeowner, but I don't see it. Listen, I'm praising him in advance. It's already done. It's just at his timing, he makes everything beautiful. At his timing. But listen, I don't want God's timing to kick in and I'm still doubting. The devil is a liar. It's already done. Well, when are you going to pay off the debt? I'm already debt free. Somebody, you better change your speech. Your words are powerful. We prayed about it. Now speak differently. It's already done. I'm already debt free. I'm already who God called me to be. When God told me years ago that he had called me to the nations. I saw that in a dream and vision. The Lord says, I called you to the nations. And back in the day, I had got my teeth fixed. I'm telling you, I went and got my, I, I took speech classes. Listen, I come from the streets. I didn't know God. I was out in the streets, smoking drugs, all kind of stuff. And God begins to put anointings on me. He pulled, he snatched me out of darkness and put me into his marvelous light. And then he started telling me, listen, go, go, go to speech class. I was talking so ghetto. What it is, folk, what it is, shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it, all this, all this. I don't even know if they say that word no more. But honey, I was talking so ghetto. I enrolled in, 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 in speech class and they taught me how to talk. They taught me how to elongate my words, how to speak in front of cameras. All of this was young. I was a young girl. They taught me this stuff. They told me, go fix your teeth because people like to look at something that looks pleasant. So go fix all your flaws. Now, he didn't tell me to be perfect, but I knew I was called to something bigger than me. And I'm up here spending money on braces. Then I then, then I got broke when I was younger and couldn't um, afford um, to go get my retainers. Boy, my teeth, all that stuff shift, shifted back. So here I am in my 40s wearing braces again. Because what? I have an assignment on my life and I can't do what everybody do. Y'all don't want to hear this. I'm ready. I'm training up next leaders. I'm training up those who are called to, to take people from where they are to where they're supposed to be. You can't do what everybody do. I got to keep myself and my appearance up because, come on, TV was calling me. I looked up, the Word Network was calling me. Been on there three times, then 700 Club. They called me. Been on those 700 Club. And they didn't call me because I was practicing. Come on, practice is this. Practice, you don't practice when it's time to do God's will. You do that in the wilderness. And see, some of you in the wilderness, you complain. And when I was in the wilderness, I was getting myself together. Come on, come on. Some of you need to be working out. Some of you need to get your, come on. When I was in the wilderness, I was building up my iron, my blood. Come on, I got to go travel to Europe. I can't be sick. They rushing me to the hospital. 
The woman of God can't preach because she's sick. Because she, when she was in the wilderness, she didn't build her blood. She didn't work on her body. She didn't eat the proper foods. There are certain days the Lord will tell me to go eat liver and onions. Y'all don't want to hear this kind of mess up in here. Y'all don't want to hear this. You can't go to your next level until you begin to teach your body. Ask God to teach me and train me what to eat. There are certain days the Lord said, eat liver and onions and spinach. This morning, you ain't eating nothing for breakfast. Yo, the only breakfast you're going to drink is a spinach smoothie. Why I'm building my iron. And so when I preach, they'll look at me. You got so much energy. You ain't tired. You ain't weak. Because when you're called to the nations, I can't afford. I don't even expect to get sick. Don't you smell victory? See, I'm, I want to encourage you. It wasn't, it wasn't wrong in the wilderness. The wilderness you was preparing. I was preparing myself in the wilderness. Now I got people around me. I say, you ready to go? They're like, I don't feel good. I, listen, I've been prepared for this a long time ago. See, people think you are overnight success. No, we've been doing this since our 20s. I'm in my 40s. I've been, do, I've been preparing in my 20s. I'm in my 40s. And there are some people in their 20s are already where I am. Come on, but that's the grace that's on their life. I'm here to tell you, kick out the excuses. What do what has God called you to do? If he called you to write books, baby, you need to cut off that TV and begin to stop getting distracted. And you should have at least 20 books under your name. A journal, a book, a workbook, all kind of stuff. Where's your products? Come on, it's time to go to your next. But you will never get there with excuses. You will never sit there. Uh, 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 and people who won't work on the assignment God has fought for them, they're jealous of everybody. They're envious of everybody because they won't do the hard work. Do the hard work so you won't be jealous of everybody. I smell victory over you. But this kind of victory is going to require you to roll your sleeves up and fight the good fight of faith. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word, the prayers that went forth today in the name of Jesus. You said if we can believe for the impossible, we will see it in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord God that this message is not to make someone feel as if they're not good enough, but to make us see that God has already called us. God has already called us and we're called and we're anointed by God to do great things. And God, I thank you, Lord God, that you're waking up the giant that's in us. You're waking up. You're not a chicken. You're an eagle. I rebuke that chicken spirit. You are eagle walking your anointing. Stop giving your power away, thinking that somebody else can make you an eagle. You are the eagle. Eagles fly high and eagles fly above situations. You got to go higher. Stop. Listen, you know, I'm in a place now. I don't care what people think about me. When I when I get around people in ministry and all they talk about, this one don't like me, this one don't like me. I'm like, I have grown I have grown to the place where when eagles don't care, eagles don't care. Listen, what you do need to care about is the right people that God sends around you. But just talking all day who don't like you, who did it, that's slowing me down. That's keeping my mindset low. I need to, I understand that comes with the territory. But if you are eagle, your mindset is different. You need to get around people that have different mindsets that can shift you. You need to get around people that has different conversations. We pray differently. We we pray we pray victory prayers, not defeated prayers. Your days are listen. If you go on another person's live and they are begging God, God, please help me. God, God, I don't know what to do. I did everything in the book. You better you better log off. You better jump off. Because if they are victim in prayer, you'll be a victim in prayer. And you don't understand the reason your prayers are not being answered because you're not praying the right way. We don't pray prayers of defeat. We pray prayers of victory. And how you pray prayers of victory, you pray like it's already done. I'm already a winner. I'm already. Uh, come on. Uh, uh, greater is he that sent me. Listen, sickness tried to hit my body the other day. I said, greater is he that sent me than he that's in the world. God is in me so I can't get sick. God is in me. I can't fail. God is in me. I can't lose. I can never lose. I can never lose. Why? Because the greater one is in me. I got the life of God in me. I can never lose. It's your perspective. Somebody just said, I can never lose. I can never lose because I got the life of God in me. 
If there's someone that's in here that wants to give your life to Jesus, repeat this prayer after me. Say, that's me, that's me, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. If that's you, say, Father God, I confess that I'm a sinner. Wash me, save me, deliver me, set me free. I want you to be Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, over my life. Come into my heart, Jesus. Satan, you no longer have rights, authority over my life. I belong to Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We pray Holy Spirit will begin to lead you and guide you to the right church family. So you can now begin to grow in the things of God. Listen, you're on an amazing journey. Amen. Amen. That is going to shift your life. Amen. Those of you that's on here and you were blessed by today's prayers and decrees over your life. Amen. And you can sense the victory. I want you to sow that victory seed. Amen. That victory seed today. Amen. Sow to where you're going. Never leave God's presence empty handed. So many people, they'll come before God's presence. They'll suck you dry and they'll walk on. And God is saying, mm -mm. when you come before my presence, you come with a sacrifice of worship. Remember the prophet. Uh, 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 was his prophet? Uh, which one? It was uh, Saul, prophet Saul. I think it was King Saul. He was with his servant and he said, I need an answer. And, and he, his servant said, there's a prophet. He don't miss. It's prophet Samuel. He said, well, take me to him. But he stopped him and he said, y'all know that scripture? He said, we can never go before God's man or God's woman empty handed. He said, where's our seed? Go read it in the Bible. When I read that, I was shocked. That you never go before God's God's presence, God's service, empty handed. You always leave a seed. You leave a seed. You sow unto the presence of God. Even if they don't ask, you got to get to a point. They ain't got to ask me. You have blessed me, God, today that I, I'm smelling the victory and I'm going to see it. And if I can believe for the impossible, I'm going to see the impossible. My faith has been charged and activated. So, Lord God, now all I can do is begin to sow the victory and begin to expect it. If I can believe it, I can receive it in Jesus name. Those of you who are sowing that victory seed in Jesus name, I want to pray over every person now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless your obedience, your faithfulness towards him in the name of Jesus, the amount the Lord. Some of you, he may say, sow that jubilee seed, $50. Amen. Glory be unto God. Some of you just begin to sow that seed of faith today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sow that victory seed, a victory seed, whatever the seed amount he told you. Some of you, it may be a 120 seed or whatever the amount he told you to sow is his victory. Victory, victory, my victory seed of $20, my victory seed of $40, my victory seed. Come on, this is my victory seed of 50, my victory seed of 100. Lord, I give you a sacrifice. I, I need to see the victory in my business. I need to see the victory in my marriage. I need to see the victory over my finances. I need to see the victory over my health. Lord God, I smell it. I sense it. Something good is going to happen. Something great is going to happen. I sow to that word. Amen. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. No false expectation. God, God, he shows us that he don't play about people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that we will see testimonies. We will see breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for everyone that is sowing for their families, their children, in the name of that, their children will see sweatless victories in Jesus' name. We will see the impossible, impossible things will happen to us in Jesus' name. We thank you today that something great is going to break out in our lives. Mind-blowing miracles, mind-blowing breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. As we trust you, we thank you, Lord God, that is already done. We speak the faith. We thank you, Lord God, that nothing will be able to stop the move of God. I don't care what the devil, he, if he don't like it or whatever, Lord God, this seed is to you to say thank you. Thank you that it's already done. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. And your promises are true and they are amen. I thank you, Lord God, that everyone is sowing. I stand in agreement with them that Satan take his hands off of them, their finances. And when they sow, you receive double for your trouble, double for your trouble, double. May the Lord give you double back. Whatever seed amount you sowed, you will receive double in ministry, double blessings and and your your businesses double double favor over you on that job may you receive double if they ever trying to let someone go because this victory see they will say for some reason we got to keep you for some reason you you will be overlooked over 
uh, letting go in the name of because of that victory seed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever disease of the week that's trying to hit your body because of this victory seed, you will see the healing virtue of God covers you, covers you. You'll have people come up to you. I got sick. I got the, and you'll be like, I don't know why, but God is covering me. Baby, it's the victory seed. The Lord is making sure he, he his word don't lie. God is not a man that he should lie. You will see the victory financially. You'll see the victory in your health. You'll see it on your finances, your ministry will see it. You will see supernatural people start showing up at your ministry. And you're saying, I didn't even advertise. Baby, you ain't got to advertise when victory is all over you. Amen. The Lord will just put it in somebody's spirit. The Lord will wake people up. That victory seed will make people wake people up today and show up at your business, give you new clients. You will look up God had and gave you 20 new clients today in the name of Jesus, all because of, he says, for your shame, I will give you double. As we sow by faith, we thank you that it's already done. Listen, you will know no recession. The Lord will give you restoration. You will recover all in your finances. You will never go down in business. You can never fail because you have the life of God in you. And you got to speak to that storm and say, listen, you better go in the name of Jesus. I command you to go. You got but one day that you better get one hour. I give you one hour. You get out of here. I send fire against you. Come on, I declare the name of Jesus. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. And I have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. May the Lord bless your obedience in Jesus' name. Amen? May the, may you see supernatural testimonies in Jesus' name. Before the month ends, before November ends, we declare all will be well. Someone said all is well. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say before this month ends, you will hear all is well. All is well. Someone say, all is well. All is well. Before this month ends, all will be well. All will be well. All will be well. All is well. All is well. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All will be well. In the name of Jesus. All is well. All is well in your business, your finances. It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. Listen, we have an in-person service that's coming up next month. Make sure you get registered. Meet us in Atlanta. Don't miss it. Some of you, we haven't seen you all year long. We want to see you at the end of the, the last glory night uh, service in um, December. Don't miss it. Uh, let's begin to come with great expectation that the Lord begin to speak through the scripture. The word concerning you uh, is free, but we want you to register so we can know how many people to prepare for. I believe God is going to do something great, not only in this service, but also in those who are coming. All right. So here is the link to register. Uh, it's free. It's December. The link will tell you the dates. You just click on that link and um, it, you click on Eventbrite. It'll tell you the date. And um, and we will see you um, December. We'll see you December. And so um, can't wait to see you December uh, for our last glory night, a night of worship, a night of training and activation for the supernatural power of God. Amen. And those of you who um, would like to pray at five o'clock in the morning, we'll be praying this Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. E-S-E-T, E-S-T time. Uh, join us for five o'clock in the morning prayer. We speak and decree the word of the Lord over our life and command our morning. We command our morning. Amen. God bless you all. It was an honor to pray with you all. We'll see you soon. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Stay connected. Go to my website, www.jackieflemmer.com. Amen. Uh, uh, subscribe. Uh, uh, stay connected with us on Instagram. I'm on Instagram. I've been seeing some of you all on Instagram. Thank you for inboxing me and saying, hey, I watch you on I watch you on lives and everything. So we're on Instagram. Amen. Go to Jackie Fleming One. I only have one Instagram page, Jackie Fleming One. The other ones are fake pages. Jackie Fleming One. This is the correct spelling of my name, Jackie Fleming One. Amen. Glory be unto God. Listen, uh, I'm going to tag my name at the end of the video. Stay connected with me on Facebook. Amen. Jackie Fleming on Facebook. Amen. Go like the page. 
stay connected with me on Facebook. Amen. And then we're on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is growing. Amen. By leaps and ground. Oh, I see you all are registering for December. I see you're coming in. Registration is coming in free. It's free uh, for the December service. So let's see what the date is because I see someone just registered. Okay, Sister Jones just registered for uh, the December Glory Night, and that date is December the 15th. <laughs> December the 15th will be our next Glory Night service at 7.30 in Atlanta, Georgia, so you don't want to miss it, December the 15th. Amen? So listen, I can't wait to stay connected with you all. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. We fast and pray on Wednesdays because we're covering you in the blood of Jesus. We cover your region. We pray for you. You got somebody that's praying for you. Amen. And I thank God for the anointing that's on your life. I thank God for you pushing and pressing through. And I thank God for you resting in God, trusting him that I prayed in faith. Now I'm going to rest. Someone just say that I have prayed in faith. Now I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest in God. I'm going to rest in God. I have already prayed in faith. Now I got to let God fight my battles. Listen, shout your city and your state out. We we pray and fast over each in person that has tuned in. Even if you don't even comment, we pray for you. Hey, the Lord sees and knows all. We pray for you, Lord, every person that tunes in, every person that liked this video, every person that shared it, every person that invited, we pray for them. So we pray for your region. We cover you in the blood of Jesus from sicknesses, viruses, diseases. We speak Psalms 91 over you. The enemy can't touch you. He can't come near you. We pray for your um, family, your children. We pray over your finances, that you continue to see the, see the goodness of the Lord in your finances. You, We pray for your health, that the Lord will continue to heal you and preserve you in the name of Jesus. We pray for you to see uh, supernatural results and may the Lord make you a sign and a wonder and may the Lord do great and mighty things in you and through you and may the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord, I just speak over every person, may the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord shine his face upon you and turn to you and give you peace in Jesus name. God bless you all. I'm Jackie Fleming. It's an honor to be used by God. I'll see you soon. Amen. God bless you.